In today's video, we have lots of news from the NHL waiver wire. We had lots of players on waivers yesterday. We'll find out if there's any claims. Plus, we have a new very interesting player on waivers today. Lots of injury updates, demotions to the American Hockey League, some prospects going back to junior, all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have some breaking news from the NHL waiver wire. Uh, we have a very interesting new player on waivers today, which we'll get to here in just a moment. Yesterday, though, we had three NHL players on waivers, including Radim uh, Simic in San Jose, Jansen Harkins, who was recently picked up by the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Zach McEwen of the Ottawa Senators. All three players have cleared. Now, I didn't really expect anybody to pick up Simic. I wondered about Harkins. I especially wondered if the Winnipeg Jets might try to get him back. If for nothing else, to maybe just because they would have the only option amongst all the 32 teams to put him directly in their minor league system and they could recall him later if they felt that he could get an opportunity with them here in a little bit, especially if they run into any injury problems or whatnot, just to kind of improve their depth, the player they're familiar with and that they draft it. Um, you know, something like that. But they did not. So they didn't even try to get him back, which is a little bit surprising in a way. And McEwen, well, he's got a three-year contract. It's at league minimum, mind you. So it's fully variable in the NHL or AHL, sorry, if the NHL team wants to send him down. But, you know, a three-year term is still more money than most teams are going to want to commit to a fourth-line player. So no huge surprises that way. So uh, with the Senators demoting McEwen, that'll happen today officially. Uh, they will be calling up a defenseman from Belleville. We do have confirmation that Artem Zub uh, will miss at least one game. They're listing him as day-to-day -day after that puck slash stick the incident with Ovechkin come up, got him in the ear. So um doesn't seem like it's going to be a long-term serious issue, but it's going to miss at least the, uh, the Saturday game against Detroit. So there will be a D called up, which is why this move was um, necessary. And we'll see um, from there. I imagine once Zub returns, uh, they may not immediately return to the defenseman. They may keep the extra D. It just kind of depends on what else happens with the roster, if they need any other moves. But obviously, they're shorthanded here until they can clear some cap space. So uh, we'll see what happens. I know in uh, new owner Michael Anlauer, it seems like pretty well everything he sends announced, since uh, including him becoming officially the new owner, has always happened on a Friday. Um, we've got big news on Friday that he was the new owner of the deal. The, sealed, um, the deal was closed uh, when they announced the uh, the promotion or returning of uh, Cy Leader. They announced the uh, president Steve Steos. And Daniel Alfredson, all these announcements with the centers have come Friday. So I know a lot of Sens fans are kind of watching social media closely, wondering if they're going to get that cap space clearing move and a signing here for Shane Pinto. But as of right now, at uh, you know almost 2.30 Eastern time, nothing as of yet. But we'll stay tuned and keep an eye on them. Elliot Friedman did say that he expected the Pinto situation to resolve over the next few days. Well, here we are. Let's see what happens. Uh, some other news from around the league. Of course, we have a new player on waivers today, and that's Columbus Blue Jackets young centerman Liam Foody. Um, now, last year, they contemplated putting him on waivers and, and sending him down. He ended up staying. They, they were a little concerned about losing him on waivers. Actually, you know, did some decent things in the NHL last year, but according to, I guess, those that are around the team, it's more so now that he's kind of been passed on the depth chart. The, the Jackets have more players that – or just, I guess they have a crowded roster, you could say. So, Foodie seems to be like an odd man out type of situation. Um, I do wonder where he's a young, uh, former first round pick, plays center, um, even though his offense has been, you could say he's, he struggled to be consistent at the NHL level. Did do some things last year, but, you know, great junior career. I do wonder if a team who's looking for some depth of center would pick him up. I honestly do. I mean, he's, you know, he's not on a long-term deal. He's not making tons of money. He's young. He's a terrific skater. Um, I wonder. I wonder if a team like Boston. I know they have their own youngster, uh, Matthew Poitra, in a center spot there in the top six uh, right now. Um I don't know how they're feeling about him if they're leaning towards sending him back to junior because a guy like uh, like Foodie is not a whole lot older, but a couple of years older, a little bit more mature, a little bit more experienced, could be at, least, at the very least a placeholder. i got to wonder about Boston. I know the Leafs are looking like they're going to probably send Frazier Minton back. Do they want to go back to Nylander at center? I mean, they have some other internal options. I don't know if they would necessarily pick somebody up. Um, 
because they do have a possibility of going back to Nylander at center. Uh, I know Jan Kroka has played center at times. So has Domi, although I think he's better on the wing. So I don't I don't know that they they they, they really look at that, but there's some teams out there for sure. Uh, and then of course you get the rebuilding teams. Um, you know, like your Blackhawks and your Anaheim Ducks and all those guys that, you know, love to kind of stockpile these young players if they can get their hands on them. So hard to say if he gets picked up or not, but I wouldn't be shocked if he does. Now, some other news when it comes to uh, lots of other things, including the Leafs. Here, let's just go back to them quickly. Uh, it is expected that Frazier Benton will be sent back to junior in the Western Hockey League. I don't know if it's going to happen today, tomorrow, or it could be another week or two, but he's likely not getting past his nine-game tryout. Um, things have certainly been good like he's been okay but I think it's fair to say that he's not ready for a full season at least that's the way things look today I know they called up Pontus Holberg today they demoted Simon Benoit on the roster to create the space so they could bring Holberg up Uh, so it looks like based on line rushes this morning and their next game looks like Frazier Minton's probably going to be a scratch Uh, he looked like he was skating as the 13th forward so if we were at a point where he's already being a scratch, then I would suspect that that's going to lead to him going to junior in the near future. But we'll have to wait for the Leafs, of course, to confirm that. Uh, the St. Louis Blues confirmed today that they're going to be inducting three former players into their own personal Hall of Fame, the St. Louis Blues Hall of Fame. And that includes a uh, longtime uh, great player, Keith Kachuk, who should be in the NHL Hall of Fame, in my opinion, but isn't. Longtime goaltender, Mike Liute, and the late Pavel Dimitra. Unfortunately, Dimitra was... Um, was killed in one of the, in that uh, that Russian plane crash all those years ago with Brad McCrimmon and several other uh, former NHL connections. There, um, uh, Dimitri was a, was a great player, uh, long time blue, and uh, certainly was uh, I know for a period of time was one of my favorite players to watch there when I was younger. So. Um, Nice to see them inducting him. Obviously, Dimitri himself can't be there. Hopefully, they have family representation of some sort or somebody there on his behalf. Uh, we had Anaheim Ducks. Uh, Leo Carlson, the number two pick in the 23 draft, made his NHL debut last night after uh, dealing with an injury to start the season. Uh, missed the first few games, but he got off to a great start. Uh, they also had the debut last night for one of their other prospects, Tristan Luno. Uh, Carlson did score his first NHL goal on his pass from Troy Terry. Nice shot into the net. Uh, so, Carlson had a great debut. That was certainly great to see here as well. Uh, some other injuries, from uh, mostly from what we saw last night. Uh, Mark Stahl, the Flyers, uh, he got hurt against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, it looks to be a rib injury, and he's uh, looking about four to six weeks. Uh, Detroit Red Wings today confirmed that Robbie Fabry's injury is a little bit worse than originally con- uh, they thought. He's going to be out for about a month. They said about four weeks. It's a lower body injury. They didn't say exactly what it was, but they did confirm that it's not a knee problem, which is good. Good news for Fabry. He has had so many knee injuries and surgeries in his young career. Uh, that was my biggest concern when I seen lower body injury with the Fabry. But it's not a knee. It's probably a foot, ankle, something else. So at least that's good in that sense. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres today also confirmed that uh, young rookie Zach Benson and young rookie goalie Devin Levi are both day to day. So it's expected after playing the first four games of the campaign here that Levi will get a rest in their next game. Uh, they do play on Saturday, and then they have a back-to-back Monday, Tuesday, uh, where they play at home Monday, and then they travel to Ottawa on Tuesday. I would suspect that Levi's definitely not going to play on the, the Saturday game. I don't know if he comes back plays one of those two in the back-to-back. Uh, normally, you play your starter on the first leg of the back-to-back, which I believe is at home against Montreal. Um, so that would be probably the game that because you want to make sure on a back-to-back you get the first half and get your two points if you can, especially if it's a team you feel like you should be able to beat more so. So it wouldn't be shocking if he does that. But I do wonder um, how this year's going to go for Levi. I know it's an extremely rare, um, almost unheard of feat to go from being a uh, college hockey or junior hockey goalie and going straight to the NHL as a starter. It's like it's it's incredibly difficult. The schedule alone is is a way whole different grind. You go from playing like, you know, 30 to 40 games a year to an 82 game campaign. It's so it's much more um, you know, strenuous that way. Uh, and it's a huge jump up when it comes to the skill level. Now, Levi had a good finish the last year getting a few games in as a sample size looked great. I'm not saying that it's false hope or anything like that, but I do wonder. I, the Sabers have a good team um, now. A couple of games they've lost. We can't be, and you can't pin all this on, on Levi. It's not him. Um, he, uh, yeah, there's some goals he should have had, but at the same time, the team in front of him should have been better at times as well. It's a bit. Of, it's a bit of everything. It's more, more than just Levi for sure. But I do wonder 
if he is going to end up taking a step back to take a big step forward. I still think he's 100% the goal of the future. Extremely talented kid, but is it too much too soon? And that's the question we're asking ourselves here. Early in the season with Levi, they have Comrie and Pekka Lukanen. I, I wonder um, you know, what they're going to do. Are they going to, because they've been long expected to maybe move a goalie, they don't want to put one on waivers. But Levi is the guy who could go to the minors and not need waivers. So I, I wonder. We'll have to see. It's going to be a really fascinating situation to see how the goalie situation plays out in Buffalo for sure because um, I think a lot of people expect and want Levi to succeed. You just wonder if it's too much too soon. Uh, hard to say. Uh, National Predators Cody Glass and Seattle Kraken forward Jaden Schwartz both left their games last night due to injuries, did not return. So there are a few more players to kind of keep an eye out for that might end up missing some time as well besides uh, the other names here that we've already kind of gone through. So that is all your updates for now. I'll be back later with another news and rumor update uh, a little bit later today before the NHL action gets underway tonight. There's only two games on the schedule. A little bit of a light evening, but we have a big day tomorrow with an early game of Ottawa-Detroit kicking things off, which might be one of the more interesting uh, games to watch considering both teams are off to a good start. Both 3-1 and one are expected to take a jump forward this year, and we'll see uh, how they do head-to-head. Last year, Ottawa dominated the Red Wings. Will it be a different story this year? Will it be closer? Time will tell. We'll find out tomorrow afternoon. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Okay.